Greece, 1944. The German army's brutal occupation has worn on for three terrible years. During the summer and fall, the Nazis are desperately trying to reposition troops and supplies out of Greece to defend against the D-Day invasion underway farther north. The Andartis, the Greek partisans who patriotically defend Greece's mountainous core, make 76 deadly strikes against the withdrawing Germans, on average about once every three days. Over 1,800 enemy are killed or wounded. Miles of roads, track, and bridges are blown up. The Nazis pay a heavy price withdrawing from Greece. Looking back from today, it is surprising to learn that these highly successful partisan assaults were organized and led by secret teams of specially trained U.S. Army infantrymen, composed mostly of Greek Americans. They were known as the Greek American Operational Groups, the OGs. At the time, the OG's brand of warfare was unique in the history of American arms. They were extremely successful, punching far above their weight and surprising their overseers by the effectiveness of their attacks. But today, their sacrifice and success are practically unknown. The Greek-American OGs had their origins in the Greek Battalion. Organized in January 1943, this Army Infantry Unit was originally intended for service in Greece. The battalion attracted enthusiastic young Greek-Americans, eager to support the U.S. and Greece in their common struggle against the Axis powers. Now here are the best of two worlds. We could fight for the American Army, and we can go to Greece and fight Greece for our parents' country. And it was very important to us. The battalion was based at Camp Carson near Colorado Springs. Commemorating 122 years of Greek independence, it was officially called the 122nd Infantry Battalion. The battalion's commanding officer was the first Greek American ever to graduate from West Point, Major Peter Demosthenes Klenos. Like his Spartan ancestors, Klenos was tough. For the Greek battalion, he wanted only the fittest men, men who could survive without any comforts and operate effectively in Greece's rugged mountains. My interest was to be number one. And this is the reason that I worked them so hard. This is the reason I drove them. And it worked, because the reputation got out. The result was a tough, high-spirited unit spoiling for a fight with the German occupiers in Greece. When we got into the Greek battalion, it was a lot of pride for us that here, we're not dirty Greeks, we're not dumb, we're not ignorant. We have a real functional group here that's very, very good. But the battalion never fought in Greece as planned. In August 1943, Major Klenos sadly announced that the battalion was being disbanded and dispersed into other units. But he also had other news from a representative of the OSS. He said, the OSS is interested in your outfit. I said, what, what's it all about? He says, well, I can't tell you right now, but you'll probably get a call from them. Sure enough, in a week's time, I got a call and they wanted some men, the OSS. I said, all right, I'll talk to the men and I'll let you know. Now, I want to know how many of you volunteer for it so that I can tell them. And they all raised their hands. Few of the men had heard of the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, the U.S.'s super-secret counterpart to Britain's Special Operations Executive. I didn't know OSS from SOS at the time. In fact, the media was calling them also secret. Guerrilla. Saboteur, Commando. Americans are becoming increasingly aware of the importance of these names in the news of World War II. Opportunity has arisen for the use of small bands of highly trained irregulars to be injected behind enemy lines. With almost certain death as the penalty for capture, these men must operate toward the utmost destruction of property and life. 
These specially trained ethnic American sabotage and close assault teams, Greek, Yugoslavian, Italian, French, and Norwegian, would effectively support the partisans in German-occupied Europe. They asked me questions about my background, about my knowledge of Greek. They said, would you be willing to go behind enemy lines, live off the land, perform extra hazardous duty? What they promised us in the beginning was death. Now, do you want to come? Well, I looked at it and I thought, well, <laughs> I'm never going to die. Nobody's ever going to kill me. I'm going. In October 1943, 17 chosen officers and 205 enlisted men went east for special operations training at the clandestine OSS training center on the grounds of the Congressional Country Club in Chevy Chase, Maryland. After their rigorous physical training at Camp Carson and their specialized training in Maryland, the OGs had more stamina, stealth, and self-sufficiency than any other units in the U.S. Army. And they were ready for action. On Christmas Day, 1943, six Greek-American combat groups and a field service headquarters group were convoyed across the Atlantic. After further training overseas, nighttime insertions from Italy by boat and parachute began in April 1944. From the drop points, the OGs immediately put their intensive training to work by walking through the mountains to their respective areas of operation, mostly in Epirus, Macedonia, and central Greece. It took one group nearly 30 days to reach its destination. Once in place, they could not expect reinforcements, tactical support, or medical aid. They had no withdrawal route and were expected to remain in Greece indefinitely, living off the land and moving around on foot. Their mission was to buttress Operation Noah's Ark, the British plan to make the German withdrawal from Greece before and after D-Day as costly as possible. Roads and railway lines connecting Greece's main cities were the biggest targets. Once in position, the OGs typically derailed trains or stopped convoys with carefully placed explosives. Then they poured in deadly fire, knowing where to position bazookas and machine guns in relation to the spacing of train cars or trucks in a convoy. After attacks, some OGs left calling cards behind empty packs of American cigarettes. The Germans had been told they were fighting a peasant army, but they discovered they were fighting Americans. The OG's presence was a great morale booster for the Andartis. OG's were the close assault troops in nearly all of the Andartis operations and often meant the difference between success and failure. Apart from the death and damage they inflicted, the OG's assaults wore on German nerves. The attacks were sustained over many months. The Nazis could repair damage from individual strikes, but the overall effect was demoralizing. Their effectiveness can be judged by the severity of the German response. Even though the OG's deployed in uniform, an illegal Wehrmacht order directed that they be slaughtered to the last man if captured. Nighttime assaults, meticulous planning, and the advantage of surprise kept casualties far below expectations. Only one man was killed. 13 were wounded. With their mission complete, the Greek-American OGs were withdrawn from Greece at the end of 1944, and they were officially disbanded a year later. The records of their actions were then sealed for 40 years. Because they operated autonomously in their respective areas and did not have access to their records, many of the OGs never learned the extent of their effectiveness against the Germans. Technically, they had operated under British command, so the U.S. Army did not fully recognize their war record. 
Many of their separation papers did not mention ground combat in Greece. Some never learned until decades after the war that they had been awarded a presidential unit citation in 1946. Recently, these nearly unknown soldiers have begun to be recognized. In 2005, a commemorative monument designed by the sculptor Andrew Sappas was erected in Athens. Two veterans have published memoirs based on now unsealed records in the National Archives. This short tribute is the American Hellenic Institute's way of honoring these unsung Greek American heroes. All of us should remember their pioneering service and be grateful for their sacrifice. Thank you.